us right now on Sunday Morning Futures. The president set to visit Arizona this Tuesday for a border town visit and a rally as he starts his first week without his strategist, Steve Bannon. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee coming up on that in moments. Plus, more threatening messages from North as the United States and South Korea plan to hold military exercises Monday morning to address the threat of a potential nuclear attack. Congressman Peter King of the House Homeland Security Committee on that, as well as the investigations into the terrorist attacks in Spain and Finland. And as the Russia investigations continue to get much of the focus, there are now new developments this morning in the call for an investigation into that tarmac meeting between Bill Clinton and former Attorney General Loretta Lynch a few months before the presidential election. One of the lawyers leading the call for answers joins me live right now as we look ahead on Sunday Morning Futures. President Trump set to return to the White House tonight ahead of a trip to Arizona on Tuesday. He's expected to visit the border town of Yuma before holding a campaign style rally in Phoenix. Arizona Republican Senator Jeff Flake is a vocal Trump critic. But as the president starts his first full week without chief strategist Steve Bannon, other GOP lawmakers are criticizing his response still to Charlotte. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. Great to be with Let's you. Let's start with Steve Bannon's removal uh, from the White House. The president begins this new week without that counsel and that strategist. And of course, we want to get into the South Korean missile exercises tomorrow, as the military exercises, rather, as well as Tuesday's rally. What's your sense of how things change this upcoming week? Well, I think when Steve Bannon left, I have it on good authority that as he was leaving the White House, he was screaming, free at last, free at last. <laughs> Look, I think Steve Bannon is going to be much happier outside the confines of all of the restrictions of government. He's gone back to Breitbart. He's going to be free to uh, continue to uh, speak very clearly about the kind of American populism that, frankly, had a lot to do with Donald Trump being elected president. And I think Steve Bannon is going to be much more effective outside the White House, outside the walls of government, than he was inside the walls of government. Yeah, but the president obviously has had one of his toughest weeks so far this past week, Governor, from the reaction to his response to Charlottesville, to the CEOs uh, stepping down and forcing the president to disband all of those councils, to, uh, look, Missouri senator uh, say, calling for his assassination which is completely outrageous, and she's not getting any uh, pushback on it. It's just a slap on the wrist. How does he change? Does he need to pivot, Governor, in, in, in the face of all of this uh, pushback? The tough part for him is he's got to realize it's not going to get better. Mm. The press hate him. The Democrats hate him. They want to get rid of him. And sadly, there are a lot of Republicans who hate him and are trying to get rid of him. So all Donald Trump really has, he's got two basic, really strong support groups. One, he has the faith community. I, I want you to notice that in all of this last week, there was only one person from his faith council that decided to leave. Everybody else is staying put. That's a key part of his constituency. Secondly, he's got a lot of people, working men and women across the country in rural America, middle America, who they're not stupid. They see what's happening. This is an attempt to discredit and ultimately dislodge Donald Trump from the White House. And they realize that so much of the so-called outrage is manufactured. And it's manufactured to give them something to talk about. Let me give an example. There was more talk about Steve Bannon, the fact that a staff member left, and apparently it was a mutual decision between him, John Kelly, uh, than there was about the fact that Hope Hicks became communications director. I think this is a really big story. Yeah. Hope Hicks is probably one of the best uh, people Donald Trump has around him. This was a brilliant move. She's now the new comm director. Great move by, by the president, somebody who is loyal, faithful, and it's never about her. You never see her jumping in front of a camera or trying to talk to reporters on the record. I think that's significant. Yeah. L let me just say, Maria, what I would love to see Donald Trump do is to outdo his opponent. So let me give an example. When they're calling for the destruction of the statues, I would suggest Donald Trump, instead of trying to beat them, join him and say, you know what? Maybe we should do that. And here's what we should also do. Let's call upon Democrats to never again have a Jefferson Jackson dinner. And when they do, I hope that every African-American boycotts a dinner that celebrates slave owners. Let's make the Democrats eat the fact that it was Democrats who built those statues. It was Democrats who fought racial equality all the way up through the 60s. Let's make them remember their history and the statues that they built 
for the racists that uh, were the ones who stood at schoolhouse doors across the South and said to African Americans, you can't come in these yeah. school doors. Well, I think you make a great point, Governor, but the fact is, is unfortunately, this is not just an argument back and forth. This is going to impact business. This is going to impact the business of the American people. I mean, what I'm told right now by insiders is that they, the Democrats are going to put this new amendment in every bill. So in other words, it's going to mess around with the appropriations process. Even though they may not vote on every final bill, they're going to have a motion to include an amendment. And that amendment is going to be, we need money to take down the Confederate statues. I don't know the answer to this in terms of taking down all of these statues. I don't know that you want to wipe away America's history. You want a reminder of who this country was and is today so that this country never goes back to, the, to, to such a horrific moment in time. Having said that, Having said that, what's your take on how this busts up the reform, perhaps another health care bill that seems to be still out there? Um, is it going to mess up the appropriations process where once again, the people are the losers because the voters, the American people do not get to see their tax reform, which is what they want? If they don't get these things, it's not because of the Democrats. It's because of a bunch of wuss Republicans who will not stand who will not stand up to the pressure and who will not do what they promised to do. The reason we don't have a repeal and replace is because the Republicans blew That's it. That's right. And, and I, you know, with all due respect to Mitch McConnell, when he says, well, the president had excessive expectations. No, he didn't. He just expected that if you had a majority in the House and the Senate and the White House, as has been promised for seven and a half years by the Republicans, give us all of these things and we'll get this done. And then they can't get it done. Look, the reason we don't have tax reform is because of Republicans. The reason we haven't defunded Planned Parenthood is because of Republicans. And here's one that now Republicans have a good reason to do. They could say we've got to defund Planned Parenthood because it was started by one of the racist of all time, Margaret Sanger, who was an avowed racist and who believed in eugenics and said the most horrible things about African-American wow. people. That's a good reason to do it. Why don't they do that? That's My it. gosh, if Jeff Flake and people like him would spend half as much time helping this president build a country rather than trying to sell his book, my gosh, we'd have this uh, agenda well underway. That's a really good point. Governor, what do you think uh, John Kelly has done to change the situation or improve things for the president? You know, a couple of weeks ago when, when General Kelly was first put in as his chief of staff, we all thought, well, he's going to put discipline and, and, and a new structure in the White House for the president, keep him sticking on message, uh, because it feels like the president gets thrown off so easily. We know what the left is trying to do to, to him and to his administration. That's not stopping anytime soon. But to just react to every tweet, Lindsey Graham criticizes him. He's got to come back with a tweet criticizing Lindsey Graham. Instead of focused him, he's got to come back with a tweet criticizing Lindsey Graham. Instead of focused on the issues that matter to the American people, tax reform, getting a health care bill passed. Do you think that's still a live tax reform or at least tax cuts by year end? Well, if it didn't, the Republicans deserve to lose in the midterm. And mm. a lot of these guys need to go ahead and resign and just say, we're too weak to get it done. You've got the numbers. You've got the majority. You've got a president that wants to do it and will sign the bill when it gets to his desk. For gosh sake, put it on his desk and quit worrying about the distractions. And, and so what if Donald Trump tweets some things? There are some things I wish maybe he wouldn't distract his own message. Right. There are some battles he gets into. I wish he wouldn't. Mm. But the fact is, he's president. He has an agenda. It's an agenda that will bring real jobs, real growth to America, which, by the way, we're already seeing even in advance of it, just in anticipation. The stock market's exploded. Right. Jobs at a 17 year high. There's some good things going on out there, Maria. The media is missing most of them. Yeah. So bottom line, Governor, do you think this new debate, which is probably taking place in, in, of the Russia probe, right? I mean, the Russia probe didn't go anywhere for the Dems. So now they're over the Confederate statues, is that going to mess with the appropriations process and impact the potential for tax cuts? Not if the Republicans have enough spine to just tell the Democrats we're not playing that silly game. Yeah. I mean, for a while, it was the Russians who elected Donald Trump. Now they say it's the racists who elected Donald <laughs> Trump. They don't even know themselves that it was the American people well, who elected Donald let's Trump. Let's face it, you know, Bob Corker was very, uh, was very critical of President Trump this past week. I don't know. Some people think Bob Corker is a Democrat. He ran as a Republican, but I don't know. He doesn't act it. A lot of people wonder what his stance was on the whole Russia situation a couple of months ago. And now the criticism uh, of the president. What I mean, all of these so-called Republicans, 
uh, or Democrats uh, wearing Republican clothes. There are quite a few of them in Congress. Well, there are, and, and that's why I say either, uh, you know, either get your job done or go home. It's time to, to go big or go home. And a lot of these guys, I, it's almost like I want to say to them, how do you think this would be for you right now if Hillary were your president? Mm. How much fun would you be having? And I think a lot of them would be having fun because all they got to do is then criticize. They're not, respect, they're not then responsible for getting results. But we didn't send them there to make speeches. We sent them there to make America great again, to borrow a phrase from someone I know. Yeah. <laughs> why don't they do it? This is why they're there. It's going to be quite the midterm elections next year, 2018. Wow. A lot on the table, Governor. Good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. You bet, Maria. Thank you. Governor Mike Huckabee joining us there. Meanwhile, in Europe, Spain is mourning the victims of a pair of terrorist attacks this past week as authorities are now focusing their search on two main suspects. Congressman Peter King of the House Homeland Security Committee will join me on the attacks. The very latest threats coming from North Korea as well. A big day ahead on Monday with those military exercises. What would you like to hear from Peter King? Follow me on Twitter at Maria Bartiromo at Sunday Futures. Let us know and stay with us. We're looking ahead on Sunday Morning Futures right now. morning after a pair of terrorist attacks this past week with a van and a car left 14 people dead in Barcelona and a resort town farther south. Today, the country's king and queen attending a special mass in Barcelona honoring the victims. Police say that investigators are focused on a missing uh, imam and the 22-year-old Moroccan suspected of driving that van in Barcelona. Meanwhile, the Finland, in Finland, rather, another Moroccan suspected uh, in a knife attack that killed two people. Joining me right now, New York Congressman Peter King, a member of the House Intelligence and Homeland Security Committees, and it is good to see you, Congressman. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, you know, very much. I've been asking uh, all week. It, from what we have learned so far, it indicates that there was a cell near Barcelona, and that cell was responsible for both attacks in the seaside uh, area as well as uh, within Barcelona, but it was really low tech. They wanted to do something bigger, but then they actually, the house that they were planning all of their uh, war games in blew up because they had an accident. So they didn't have all of that firepower, so they just got in their van that they hired and they plowed through people. How do you stop these low tech uh, terrorist attacks when obviously they can just get in a car and go to a crowded area, Congressman. Yeah, you're right, Maria. In many ways, they are the most difficult. Uh, however, uh, the only way to really get it done, or hope to get it done, is by having uh, intelligence beforehand. Because if somebody's driving a vehicle down the road and they decide to go into a crowd, there's no way you can stop it. But if you do know in advance they plan on doing that, the idea is to stop them and lock them up before they can do it. And that uh, involves, one, getting informers within the community, it involves people coming forward, and it involves extensive police surveillance. And uh, whether or not that's politically correct or not, that's the only way that you have a chance of holding off these attacks. And Spain has you know, the additional problem of being so close to Morocco. So uh, as far as we can tell, many of these terrorists in the cell came from Morocco. So they have that extra issue there that they have to be aware of, and they can't allow themselves to be deterred by political correctness. Now, in fairness to the Spaniards, I mean, basically since the, uh, the horrible uh, train attack in Madrid in 2004, they have uh, not had any serious attacks in Spain until this one, and they've locked up hundreds of uh, suspected terrorists in Spain. But I would say in answer to your question, the only way to stop them is to get the intelligence beforehand. Other than that, it's really just luck, whether or not you're going to spot somebody coming down the road acting erratically, or you're going to see something in the last minute. The idea is to stop it before it can start. Yeah, I mean, now there's all of this uh, mistrust going on uh, in Barcelona and in and around that area in Spain, because a big portion of the population is, in fact, Moroccan, as you say. So it's the Moroccans right. versus the, the Spanish locals, and they're not trusting one another uh, in terms of who's doing what. It's really a, a horrible situation. A word on what we know about the driver that apparently is still on the run, the driver of that first van who, who plowed into the people in, in that busy uh, uh, Barcelona area. Do we know anything about his whereabouts? Uh, I, again, you know, uh, what I've heard I really can't go into, but the fact is that I, I believe that they have an idea where he is. But again, that's, uh, you know, when you're thousands of miles away and you're relying on uh, secondary reports, I don't want to speculate on that. But, you know, the Spanish police are very good. 
Law enforcement and intelligence people are very good. Right. I think odds are they, they, you know, they're going to get him. All right, let me, let me ask you about two things real quick before we go. North Korea. Yeah. Tomorrow, the U.S. and South Korea will, will, will put on these uh, military exercises. A lot of people saying this is going to upset the North Korean leader even more. It's going